yours in abundance through the knowledge of our God and Father and of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory forever. Amen. God's word for our consideration um, this Father's Day is the gospel. We heard it just a couple of minutes ago. St. Mark was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write in chapter 4. Jesus also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground. This is the word of our Lord. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, dear friends. We fathers usually have a pretty limited view on life. It's so easy for us to only see the the, the small picture instead of seeing the big one. The father of a newborn baby wonders if she will ever sleep through the night. All he can focus on is the disrupted sleep day after day, night after night, week after week as his little daughter wakes up screaming And finally, it goes back to sleep, only to repeat it again, and he wonders if he will survive with his sanity intact. Fast forward 15 years, that same father, now the father of a teenager, wonders if he'll ever survive her teenage years. Will he ever be able to have a conversation with his daughter that doesn't met with a roll of the eyes or a slam of the door? Will he survive that phase with his sanity intact? Fast forward 15 more years. Now that daughter is grown. She's married. She has kids of her own. Now, now he sees the big picture. And now he realizes those first few weeks and months of life where you don't think you'll ever get a night's sleep again. Those pass by just like that. And yeah, you do survive the teenage years. And you become good friends once again. Too bad that we can't always simply take a step back in life and and look at the big picture, see the end result, kind of fast forward to the end because it's so easy to become frustrated or discouraged when we see only the small picture. God isn't like that though. He sees the big picture. He knows the end result. That's what Jesus is telling us this morning in the two parables that we heard in our gospel. Jesus is here though not talking about raising children. He's not talking to fathers specifically or mothers, but he's speaking rather about his kingdom, God's kingdom. Let's listen to our Savior Jesus as he tells us more about God's kingdom, as he helps us see the big picture of God's kingdom. Before we do that, though, maybe we ought to just make sure we understand what Jesus means by the kingdom of God. What exactly is God's kingdom? I think there are some misconceptions about that even among Christians. I think among some Christians, they they view God's kingdom in terms of, of, of worldly power and influence. I'm afraid there are a lot of Christians who feel like uh, the, the, the job number one for, for Christians in the Christian church is to... Uh, impact politics, to wield worldly influence and power. That was the mistake that Pontius Pilate made when he was speaking to Jesus on Good Friday. Jesus had been accused of being a king rival to Caesar. And so Pilate asked him, are you really a king? Thinking in terms of political power and prestige. And Jesus answered and said, yes, you're right, I am a king, but... My kingdom is not of this world. The kingdom of God is not about politics and power and prestige. I think there's a second mistake, though, that Christians can sometimes make regarding what is the kingdom of God, and that's to kind of go in the opposite direction and think God's kingdom is only heaven. It's only about eternity. It's only about what's waiting for us after we die as if God isn't concerned and has no influence and impact on the rest of our lives. And that's not true either. So what is the kingdom of God? Well, Jesus once said, the kingdom of God is within you. A simple definition of a kingdom would be the place where a king rules. 
So where does God rule? Well, in, in, in a general way, we'd say he rules everywhere. He rules the universe. But in a very specific way, we would say he rules in the hearts of those who believe in him. He is the king of our lives. We are part of his kingdom because we are joined to him by faith. Being part of the kingdom of God means knowing that, that our God loves us. It means knowing that our God forgives us. It means knowing that our God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. It means knowing that he has a forever home waiting for us. It impacts every single aspect of our lives. The kingdom of God is something that is inside of us because it is a matter of faith. To help us understand a little bit more about God's kingdom, Jesus told a couple of parables, both having to do with plants and growing. Let's start with the second parable that Jesus told in our gospel, the one about the mustard seed. Jesus was referring to a kind of mustard seed that, that grew up to a plant that would exceed eight feet in height as Jesus put it in the, in the parable, a, a plant so big that the birds of the air could perch in its shade. And yet it started with the tiniest of seeds. Those mustard seeds are so small, you can hardly see them without the aid of a magnifying glass. Jesus was teaching us about the big picture. You see, God sees the big picture. He doesn't just see that tiny seed being planted. He sees the grown plant, the result of it. But we don't always see that, do we? It's so easy for us to focus on the smallness of the seed. Think of the disciples, for instance, as they gathered with their risen Savior before his ascension into heaven, and he told them, Go and make disciples of all nations. And they probably were going, how in the world is that ever going to happen? Here's just a handful of us. We don't know what we're doing. You're, we're scared and, and we're small in numbers and we're supposed to go in the whole world and, and, and make disciples of all nations? Looking at the tiny seed. But God takes a step back and sees the big picture of his kingdom. He sees the grown plant. And look at the result today. The kingdom of God here in this world, that is those who are joined to him by faith, extends from sea to sea and pole to pole. It extends over the entire world. It consists of untold millions upon millions of those whom God has brought to faith. Or think maybe more locally. Back in the 1980s when our church, when Fount of Life started, a few of you were there. Just a handful of families gathered together in a storefront wondering how in the world is this ever going to work. Looking at the small picture, it's easy to get intimidated and discouraged and frustrated. And yet here we are decades later and God has blessed Fount of Life with growth, with new families, with a new place to worship. Or maybe think in terms of your own life, your personal faith. How easy it is to get frustrated with our own life of faith. When, when we think to ourselves, I go to church most of the time, I read my Bible, I pray, and yet it seems like nothing's happening. It seems like my faith is going nowhere. It seems like my life is still filled with problems and frustrations. And we focus on the small things, the little picture, the tiny seeds. God, on the other hand, sees the big picture, the end result. He sees the growth of his kingdom that maybe it's hard for us to understand or impossible for us to see. Or again, in this Father's Day, we think of our children. And I bet you I'm not the only dad out there who has felt frustrated or maybe even discouraged when we see our children getting older and it, it seems like, okay, I brought them to church, I, I taught them about Jesus, we prayed with them, and, 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 and where are they now? And yet God sees the big picture. He alone knows the end result. 
Trust him, Jesus tells us. Trust God. Trust that his kingdom will grow. He promises. Understand that the growth of God's kingdom is not always just in terms of numbers, but also recognize and be confident it will grow. God promises. Don't just focus on the small picture. Don't just see the little seeds, but rejoice and be confident in the end result. See the big picture, the grown plant. Which brings us to the other parable that Jesus taught us this morning. The first, uh, the, the first one that he said in, in the Mark's gospel. The point of the first parable isn't so much that God's kingdom grows, but how it grows. The key to understanding that parable comes when, when we hear Jesus say, A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. Farmers don't make seeds grow. Seeds grow by themselves. All the farmer does is plant the seed. He has nothing to do with whether that seed germinates and grows. What a great reminder for us when it comes to God's kingdom. You see, it can be so, so frustrating for us sometimes when, when it seems like it's just not growing. Maybe you've experienced this. you got a, a friend or a co-worker who, who, by their own words and certainly backed up by their actions, does not appear to be part of God's kingdom. They don't believe. They don't believe in Jesus. And so you have been sharing your faith with that person week after week, month after month, year after year, talking to them about Jesus, trying to live by example, showing them what it means to be a believing child of God, and yet it just doesn't seem to be doing anything. And so you wonder, what am I doing wrong? Maybe if I come up with the perfect argument, if I come up with this clever comeback and post it on my Facebook page, then this person will come to faith. But Jesus says, you don't cause people to believe. That's not your job, and you don't have it in you. No more than the farmer has it in him to make the seed grow that he plants in the ground. Sow the seed. Plant the word. Share the gospel. Leave the results to God. Or again, we could make that same application to our congregation, to Fount of Life. Sure, it's grown in the years since it was started back in the 1980s. But it's not too hard living here in Colorado Springs to look around and see churches that are a whole lot bigger than ours. Some churches that see 10 or 20 or more times the attendance on a Sunday morning that we have. And maybe they haven't been around anywhere near as long as we have. And we think, what are we doing wrong? If only we had programs like they do and the facilities that they do and the staff that they do and the music that they do, then God's kingdom would grow here too. And Jesus says... God's kingdom doesn't grow because of programs or, or facilities or slick packages or clever arguments. God's kingdom grows because he causes it to grow through his Holy Spirit working through word and sacrament. God doesn't expect us to make his kingdom grow. God does expect us to share the word through which he makes the kingdom grow. That's our responsibility. That's our blessed privilege. God's kingdom grows all right. Jesus promises us that. God's kingdom grows not because of our efforts, but because of God's blessing. It doesn't get us off the hook. It doesn't mean that we can be lazy about it because, well, it's all up to God anyway. We will want to share the word of God as as effectively as humanly possible. We will want to do it to as many people as we can. But ultimately, the growth of God's kingdom, whether it's in our congregation, in the world, in our lives, or in our families, belongs to God. That's the big picture. Have you ever read a movie review where as you're reading along and it's all of a sudden you come across these words, spoiler alert. When that happens, you know that the person who's reviewing that movie is warning you. If you haven't seen the movie, you might want to not read any further because I'm going to give something away. I'm going to tell you how it ends. 
with God's kingdom, Jesus gives us a spoiler alert. He lets us in on the big picture, even when we get so focused on the small one. Here's the spoiler alert for God's kingdom. Here's how it ends. God wins. His kingdom grows. Heaven is real. And you have a place there with him. That's the big picture of God's kingdom. Amen.